I think it was one afternoon that um, one of my colleagues and I were just sitting chatting and he said, you know, there's this really good seminar happening in the mathematics department. There's something about imaging and so forth. Do you want to go? So, we weren't doing anything much better at that point, so we decided to go to his seminar. And at the, when he, Dr. Oysum gave his talk, I mean, I was simply blown away by, you know, how much he can do. The, the problem in the field earlier was that uh, since we did not have an automated system like the Farsight, what people were doing, they were studying only on few, so few, maybe 20 or maybe by 100. But by this methodology or by this Farsight software, what we can do is we can analyze hundreds of thousands of the interaction of hundreds and thousands of cells. So it's, of course it has facilitated. So it makes the data more robust. This technology offers the promise of revolutionizing medicine in the sense it gets, gives us the ability to look more deeply and more quickly at what's considered to be pretty hard problems. Our lab is called Artificial Heart Lab. And in summary, our focus is on developing technologies to bioengineer or fabricate the entire heart or part parts of the heart. So when you look at the tissue fabrication process, since the technology is so new, pretty much anything that we can manipulate has some impact on the tissue properties. And most of those changes are unknown. If you have algorithms that explain existing data fairly well, then that increases the likelihood that those algorithms would predict the unknown with a greater degree of accuracy. So Dr. Roysom has already done some optimization that is tailored for a three-dimensional artificial heart muscle, and we have some spectacular results from those, and the goal is to continue to work along those lines as well. So there is a gap between whatever clinical research I mean, and an experiment, right? And you have to fill in that gap. I guess we're one of, I mean, Farsight is one of the, the tools that will fill that gap, right? many things but for, I mean software software toolkit that can do this kind of stuff is very important. What we do is we look at the interaction between different immune cells and tumor cells. When we put the immune cell and the tumor cell together we keep it for like a few hours together and that generates uh, uh, hundreds of gigabytes of data and it, it visualizes the dynamic changes in, in each of the cell, whether it be the immune cell or the target cell. And if we go on visualizing each and every cell, it will take us ages to analyze all this data. Once we have the microscopy uh, data, we, uh, we use the software of Farsight, which provide us the necessary uh, information regarding what's actually happening between uh, immune cell and the tumor cell. The applications are not just limited to uh, cancer, but it is uh, also it can be also replicated in other diseases, for example in autoimmune diseases or other infectious diseases. Our lab is interested in identifying molecular targets and uh, changes associated with Alzheimer's disease that we can target uh, with drug therapies. In the field of Alzheimer's disease, the clinical trials have been littered with failures. Over 99% of the clinical trials over the last decade have failed. So there's really a need to discover new targets and new directions. We've, we've taken a number of approaches for discovery. And one of these approaches that we've identified that is particularly interesting and it seems very powerful is the use of Farsight. The best thing is it gives us quantitative data that we can then use to report. Whereas if you just try to look at pictures, maybe there's small details that you might overlook or things like that. Whereas the quantitative data would pick up those things. Yeah, we have also got like many other plans to further you know, improve the facet. I think what, what we have described is also to in, in, incorporate like more machine learning analytics into every module of Farsight and uh, also make it like fully automatic, easier to use, and also to extend its flexibility or um, by providing some like platform for the users to write the script of their own. 
it's not just you know impacting here the effect in Houston right but we have collaborators from you know all over the place and they're using it and they're fine already I mean it what I'm saying is that you know to answer your question is that people are already using it right it's impacting it's making an impact.